fellow Robloxians! In this video, I'll be teaching you guys how to make a playlist with tweening. We have a lot to do, so let's go. Before everything else, let's disable the default playlist. So go to Starter Player, Starter Player Scripts, and Insert Object. Insert a local script. Inside this script, let's do wait first, and then game.startergui colon set corgui enabled. Inside the parentheses, enum dot corgui type dot playlist comma false. And that should disable the playlist. So first of all, right click the startergui, insert object, and select a screen gui. In this case, I'll be naming it playlist. And uh, we want to insert another object, select a frame. And in this case, we want the size to be 0, 200, 1, 0. And the 200 there is the offset of the x value, whereas the 1 is the scale of the y value. So essentially, it's 200, uh, the frame is 200 pixels horizontally, and it fills up the whole screen vertically. Now, we also want to change its position. Change its position to 1, negative 205, comma, 0, comma, 5. And what that does is that it gives us a 5 pixel border. I think it looks better that way. Now, uh, set its background transparency to 1, and inside the frame, we want to insert a text label. I'm going to change its size to 1, comma, 0, comma, 0, comma, 25. And then uh, feel free to edit that text label however you'd like. So for example, I'm going to change its background color and its border size pixel. I will also change its font and its text color. After that, we want to duplicate this text label, and uh, the one you just made, set its name to template, because this will be our slot template for the player names, and then change its position. We want to bring this down over here, since this will be our very first template, we'll bring it down, and we'll also hide it from the screen, because we want that slot to sort of fly in once a player enters. So. Um, change its x offset to about 400 because that's definitely off the screen and then change its y offset to 30 that gives us about a 5 pixel border as well from the slot to the text label now we'll finally work on our script so inside the playlist insert object and select a local script now that we've got our script you don't have to type this down, but I just want to outline this for you guys. So, um, first of all, we're going to set our variables, then we'll set our tweening information so that we can focus on that a bit more. We also want our functions, as well as our events, and the initial setup portion. As for the variables, the variables that we'll need are local players, so local players equals game colon get service players will also need local frame local frame equals script dot parent dot frame and local slots equals frame dot slots lastly we well not lastly but local temp equals frame dot template Next is local players underscore table equals an empty set of curly braces. And I'll explain a little more later on on why we need a table at all. Now let's uh, move on to our functions because we're going to skip over the tweening information. We're not quite there yet. The first function we'll need is local function cleanup parentheses. Now what this function will do is wait until the slot finishes tweening. However, in order to know what the slot is, we'll put a slot in between these parentheses. Now, um, to writing it, we just type down repeat, enter, wait with the parentheses, and right next to until we want to write slot dot 
position dot x dot offset equals 400 because that's the position in which we're sure that the slot will be off the screen and once it's done with that we want to destroy that slot so it doesn't clog up when it's not even visible next is local function remove and in the parentheses we want leaving because this is where the uh, name of the player that's leaving will go but we won't work on this function just yet because it won't make any sense if we don't figure out how players are added to the list first so let's do local function add parentheses nothing in between that and Here's our outline for that function, where we want to first loop through the players in the player service. Then we want to check if they're already in the dictionary. If not, we want to add them. And then create a slot in the player list. We also want to edit that slot so that slot has their username on it. To loop through the players, we first have to get the children of the player service. So let's do... To loop through the players, we have to first get the children of the player's service. So let's do local chill equals players. We already have that variable for the service. Players colon get children. And then for C equals one number chill do. So for each child of uh, the player's service, so for each player, we want to do is check if they're inside the dictionary. In checking if the player is present in the dictionary, what we'll want to do is if player underscore table, then brackets. In checking if the player is present in the dictionary, what we want to do is if players underscore table and then brackets. Inside these brackets, we want the player's username. So in this case, it's chill c dot name. So for example, if C was 1, chill 1 would be the very first player in the list. So if players underscore table chill C dot name is equal to nil, or if it's non-existent, then don't forget your end at the end. You want to add the player to the dictionary. So to add the player to the dictionary, we just want to set players underscore table chill c dot name equals one and it really doesn't matter what you set it equal to if it's set to equal to anything really then it will exist in the dictionary so that's all good now we want to create a slot in the list to create a slot in the list type down local slot equals temp colon clone so we make a clone of the template then in editing that slot, we want to change its name. So slot.name equals chill bracket c dot name. And then slot.text equals slot.name. So it displays the player's username. We also want to change the parent of that slot to the slots folder. I think we're good there. So let's move backwards to the remove function. Here's our outline. First, we're going to check if a player is actually leaving. If a player is not leaving, then this will be nil, and this function won't finish running. However, if a player is leaving, then we want to tween its player slot out. Then we want to use a coroutine to delete the slot once it finishes tweening. If we don't use a coroutine, by the way, it's going to stall there. So it's going to keep waiting, whereas the, uh, the other parts of the script are pretty much not going to run because it's just waiting on that slot to reach its position. To check if a player is leaving, all we need to do is if leaving then, and then don't forget to end at the end, uh, we want to tween the player slot out. So first we have to find the slot, of course. Local slot equals slots, colon find first child leaving, since leaving in this case will be the username of that player that's leaving. And to tween that player slot out, we want to do slot colon tween position. And here is where tweening comes in. The first thing we need is the position it will tween to. So udim2.new 
and in this case we uh, want to set that to 0, comma 400 since 400 will definitely be off the screen, comma 0, comma slot dot position dot y dot offset. And the reason we have that instead of zero is so that the slot will only move horizontally. I think that's a good effect. After we've set that position, we need to include other things. We need an end position. We already have that right now. We need an easing direction. There are three different types of easing directions. You guys can check them out. The one we'll be using is out though. We have easing styles. There are several easing styles. You should check those out as well. Uh, the time is the time it takes to tween. And the wiki says that the override will allow you to control whether a tween will interrupt another tween. We already have our end position, so let's set an easing direction. And let's set a variable actually. Local dir equals quotation marks. Inside the quotation marks, we need out. Local style equals quad. Local time. Or actually, not time, because that would mess things up. Time cannot be a variable. So local dir for duration equals 0 0.5 and we can just set the override ourselves. So after the position we've set, uh, type down a comma, dir, comma, style, comma, dir for duration, comma, true. Then we want to delete the slot once it finishes and in this case we'll use a coroutine. Local core equals coroutine dot wrap in the parentheses put in cleanup and then you want to call in that core scene core and then in the parentheses slot since we need to send the slot now we're done with the remove function let's move over to uh, our last function here local function adjust in our adjust function we're going to call on the add and remove functions so, add, enter, remove, and remember though, in the remove function we have a parameter, which is leaving, and we need to get leaving from somewhere, so in adjust, put in, in the parentheses, put in leaving, also put leaving inside the parentheses for remove. Now we need to loop through the players table. Uh, to do so, move for key comma value in pairs parentheses and the parentheses have uh, players underscore table and do at the end don't forget your end at the very end as well we want to find the corresponding slots so local slot equals slots colon find first child and the way we set up the table is uh the key is the player's username and the value is just whatever value. So in the parentheses we want the key. After you find the corresponding slots, you want to tween the slot positions. A very important position is the Y position, so local Y pose equals. And now we have to put this together. We know that the very first slot should have a Y offset of 30. That's 5 pixels below the player's label. So we need 30 in the equation somehow. We also need to take into account the vertical size of that slot, which is 25. And maybe we want some wiggle room of about 2 so the slots aren't directly next to each other. And then we want to multiply that to a value. In this case, we need to take into account the order of the slots. So before we loop through the players table, actually, let's set a variable called count. Local count equals 0. And then right after the loop begins, we want to add 1 to the count, so count equals count plus 1. Now if we put count into these parentheses and we're finding the y position of the very first slot, the y position would be 30 plus 27 because it would be multiplied by 1. However, we don't want that. We want the first slot to be at 30. So instead of count, we want to do count minus 1. So it would be 30 plus 0, since this part here multiplied by 0 would be 0. Now that we've calculated the y positions, we want to tween it. So slot colon tween position parentheses 
udim2.new 0 comma 0 comma 0 comma y position y pose comma dir for direction style dir for duration true we're almost done let's move on to our events all we need in this section is a player added event and a player removing event so for player added do players dot player added colon connect function and all we need is to adjust now for our removing event players dot player removing colon connect function enter adjust in our remove function we have leaving because we need to know which player it is that's leaving or if anyone's leaving at all so for the player removing function the the parameter the, the first parameter is the player that is being removed so in the parentheses type leaving leaving is actually the player not the player's name so when we do call the adjust function in the parentheses we need leaving dot name also um, set the adjust function for the player added event to nil because the player is not leaving now it might seem counterproductive to have to return all these values about the player that's leaving however i've noticed that um, in my remove function if all i did was check which players are still in the game and which player slots there are there would be some sort of delay in the player leaving the game so in that exact point in time the game still detects that person as in the game now for our setup section all we have to do is adjust because i've also observed that when a player enters the game the player's client doesn't necessarily detect that the player itself has entered before we try this out we actually needed a folder inside the frame you guys might have caught that inside the frame you want to insert a folder and just name it slots make sure that it matches up with the variable that we've set right here now we should be all set let's try this out i'm also testing it out in a server to make sure it works here's how it looks when a player leaves the game Thank you for watching! Please subscribe for more tutorials, leave a like and comment down below if you're having any trouble. Oh and thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you. Thank you so much guys for all your continued support, thank you for subscribing, I really appreciate your likes, comments, and views. I honestly never expected to have over 140 of you guys. Also, I want to give a shout out to It's Polar Toxic who previously made me some awesome GFX. You guys should check out his channel. Once again. Thank you guys.